Before 40s make you a Volvo person. Do you have any chance of ever being a Volvo person? If you're not a Volvo person, you'll never be a Volvo person if a 240 doesn't push your button. So on the surface, you can see one of these things and wonder why. But a couple of miles in one, if you let your mind adjust to it, start thinking about what the car does well and where it puts your head, it totally makes sense. It's easy. It's calming. <laughs> gets you where you're going without any fuss, but it's also deeply satisfying, kind of simple mechanical level. The United States government called this the safest car in the world for experimentation and research. People bought them specifically because they were so safe, but they ended up keeping them because they loved them, because they were durable. They lasted forever. But you might have noticed this is a less than perfect Volvo 240. You might be looking at a bundle of parts that came on five or six different cars. That makes it the perfect kind of Volvo 240. These cars are not collector pieces. What makes them great is that they are usable classics. You can get in one every day of the year, any season, be comfortable, cozy, travel anywhere you need to go, haul a whole bunch of stuff, put the family in it. It's usable and you don't have to worry about it. Ask the owner if anything's been done, look at the record, pour through it. It might matter to you if you have a correct car. It probably doesn't because ultimately it's not going to change how they drive. But just know that it's very common for people to swap parts. We're going to talk about what's known as the red block. From 1976 to 1983, it was installed in the car in a 2.1 liter form. That's most of what you're going to see. By 86, it had been bumped up to 2.3 liters, made around 114 horse. None of these cars are fast. None of them make a lot of power. Everything on the car is understressed and overbuilt, and the engine is no exception. These things are good for at least 250,000 miles, if not more. You want to look for blue-gray smoke on acceleration? Probably the easiest way to tell these cars apart is by the front end. And again, those things are easily changed, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to know what your car originally came with. Until 1979, 240s came with two round headlights in our market. After that, it was four round headlights. After that, they had four small rectangular headlights. And then from 1986 on, what they called the cinder block headlights. So the axle is one of the neat parts of the car. It is essentially unkillable. The ring and pinions make noise as they get old, but by and large, it's a durable piece. It's common to Jeeps, which means that you can usually walk into a Jeep shop and say, hey man, can I have a locker? Can I have a limited slip? 